In Focus 5, we are going to begin to link the face plates that we have in our graphics library to our actual main panels and controls so we can have a better navigation with the user because all of our add-on instructions that we previously programmed in Studio 5000 Logix Designer have basically um, already graphic user interfaces developed with the code that's in the background to the faceplate. So the beauty of this is all of our add-on instructions that we have in Studio 5000 have the ability to link directly to these faceplates and manipulate all sorts of data. Each button has a control and each thing can be moved or navigated or changed in terms of parameters just numerous different things that you can do and all of those are brought to us through that plant PAX library that Rockwell Automation offers. So face plates are basically the plates that Rockwell Automation has made to go along with our add-on instructions that we programmed in Studio 5000. So many of the face plates fall under the global object category because we can use them on any display that we wish. For example, um, in the curriculum on the book, it shows the variable speed drive faceplate. So we'll go ahead and open that variable speed drive faceplate in our Factory Talk View Studio Machine Edition. So the faceplate pops up and it shows all of our images and icons in there the way they're supposed to be. So basically what we are going to do is start adding the faceplates necessary to our main display panels so that our user interface is starting to become interactive and then more populated. So the first step is to find a um, P underscore analog in object or faceplate to add to our main display. So for starters we are just going to set up the main display. So I'm going to close that object. I'm going to open my main display and we are going to set up this display so that we can see our laser data here and then maybe have basic motor control function over here. So we're going to do something similar to that. So our first step is to find an analog control. So we go to our global object P underscore analog in graphics and I am going to use this control. So again all these things inside this faceplate are grouped together already so we can copy the whole thing go to our main display we can get to it here or here and then we want to paste that object and then I like to add a name to go along with that so we're gonna call that laser height or whatever you want to call it change the text we're gonna make it white make it a little bit bigger okay so now We have our faceplate for the analog instruction on our main display. We can also do the same thing for blowers. So we're going to want to add the blower to the main display. So we're going to need to go to the um, P underscore motor graphics library and then I think we have to scroll down to find a blower and we have 
I believe we have this one, this upwards facing blower. So I'm just going to copy that one. Go to the main display again. And paste. So that's our blower. We're, we're going to copy this text that I have already pre-configured and sized and colored so that we can use that here and we will call that now motor control and then we want to put an image in the middle of the screen So the user can see um, something important about the system. We're just going to put an image, a CAD image of the actual control system. So we'll put that image in there. I'm going to shrink it down so that it fits. Undo because I grabbed the wrong thing. I'm going to shrink it down so that it fits in our main window here. And that the aspect ratio is pretty good. And then lastly, I'm going to double click that image and change it to transparent. So there we have our picture to go along with, or our image to go along with our main display panel. So anytime on that main panel, this image will show up and these controls will be visible. If we navigate to our control panel, these controls will of course be gone and replaced with whatever's in the control panel. The last thing we need to do is group our controls or link them to our main project. So we can go into um, oh, that was the wrong thing. We need to go into global object parameter values and we need to set our link for our laser control to our data that we made in our Studio 5000 programming environment. So before we can link those together, notice I went here, I go to tags, the tag library is empty. That's because this project isn't linked currently to our Studio 5000 project. So to do that, we have to start by linking that communication network through RS Links Enterprise. Double click communication setup. We need to create a new configuration. Click finish. And we are going to add a shortcut. We're going to do CLX shortcut just for controls. And then our PAC for our controls project, our, for my controls project that we created before was this one. So we go ahead and select that device and hit apply. So our new Ethernet shortcut link for CLX is going to go to ethernet.mycontrols project and we'll also have a CLX shortcut to quickly navigate to that project. And then we also need to select an offline tag file. So we're going to browse and we need to select the My Controls project that we created in the Studio 5000 environment. So wherever you save that My Controls project file, you need to access that ACD and link it to our runtime. So once you put that in 
and you have your device shortcut path set, select the proper PAC, hit apply, add the offline take file, and then hit OK. It'll say you've made changes to the shortcut. We're now adding this ACD. Click yes. So now we have basically told Factory Tuck View Studio the file that we use to create the programming environment and it can go in and manipulate and see that data. So now when we right click on this and change the global object parameter values and go into system, I hit refresh all folders and voila, we now have our CLX shortcut, which is what we defined. Now we have our offline tags and our online tags. This is what it's seeing off the controller right now. And this is what it's seeing in that offline ACD file that we just referenced in the system. So now we can go into either offline or online, doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to go into offline because it uses that ACD. And that way I can show you that it will allow you to do the programming without being connected to the system. So right now it's just using that offline ACD file with no connection whatsoever to Controls Lab or the system. So we can program even the HMI interface without being connected to the system. So for the laser height, we know that we want it to go to the P underscore analog in laser library control that we set up within the programming environment, a Studio 5000 Logics Designer. If you remember, we set up a tag specifically named this in Studio 5000, so now it has access to all of that data contained within that instruction. So there's all the tags that go along with it. We just select that, hit OK. The path is the shortcut that we created earlier, so I don't need to go and do that. I'm actually going to just type that in with brackets. CLX. The display's left position, where do we want to start? We'll start at zero. Uh, well, we'll start maybe at like 300. 300 pixels over. So when it opens that faceplate, it'll be 300 pixels over to the right. So we'll put 300 here and 0 and 0. We always want to show the faceplate. So with that set, now when we open or click on this control, the global object will automatically open the associating faceplate, which is the P underscore analog in faceplate. So when they click on this global object, this faceplate will come up. And then all of these controls that are associated with this faceplate, keep in mind we had this pop up 300 pixels over. So this will, should still be visible and the faceplate will show up in this area of the screen covering our image, but that's okay because then we can close this faceplate when we're done changing things. So now that control is linked to the programming and is ready for live interaction with the user. So this control is completely set up and done. We just got to do the same thing, edit the global object parameter values for the motor control. And in this case, we need to go to the P underscore VSD blower control from our Studio 5000 programming environment. So I'm just going to click, click on that control. Again, we need to set the path, just CLX, because we added a simple shortcut to browse the network a little easier. And again, we want it to pop up maybe in this region, so about 300 pixels to the right, and we'll just put zero zero 
and both of our controls are now configured and set up for control within the actual runtime environment. So when a user clicks on motor control, then this P underscore VSD faceplate that we showed earlier will pop up and it will be in, again, it will pop up in this region of the screen over here. Oops. So it'll show up somewhere in there. And we can, if it doesn't show up quite right, we can just adjust those global object parameter values and shift it left or right how many pixels we wish. So that is it for setting up faceplates in Factory Tuck View ME.